Hello everybody. Let's see if this goes live. I'm just waiting for my laptop to show me that we're on. Hopefully. I'm not talking to myself. I see green and yay, I see me. So anyways, oops, let me mute that and that. Okay. So today we're talking about uh, the get WMI uh, PowerShell commandlet and uh, get WMI object actually. And uh, this commandlet is uh, useful for uh, finding things that aren't normally, that either don't have a commandlet or, so in Windows 7, Windows 2008 R2, you are sometimes stuck with a very limited amount of uh, commandlets. And I found even if you install as a PowerShell 5 or 5.1, whatever you can update, even 2008 or Windows 7.2, um, although the PowerShell itself is grown in, or the version is, is newer, it still uh, doesn't give you, it doesn't update, it doesn't give you any additional commandlets that I found. So anyways, um, so this is more uh, searching through the different classes. And so many of the commandlets that you do use kind of, I, I don't know if they're built on this get WMI object, but I think they kind of sort of use the same code at least uh, that this does it's just uh, this is something you have to dig a little more around for but um, it's it's still very useful to know and I use it uh, sometimes I use this to maintain um, uh, what am I trying to say consistency across all systems I know I could the get WMI that object typically is consistent across all systems though sometimes I have run into some objects are they've changed some of the properties or the methods so it's not always perfect but uh, it's usually closer than trying to run, run different commands so without further ado um, i did put a couple of links at the bottom um, and the first one was to this uh, TechNet article i found and basically what it's saying is how do i list all the windows 32 classes so this this is handy for the fact that um, every machine is sort of um, unique on what classes it has available to it. Um, at least that's my finding. Uh, sometimes there's classes, maybe you have things installed that are hardware wise that maybe, uh, so, well, I can't talk. Anyways, um, so, and it links you to where you can um, look at all the different classes and really this is the hardware one and I'm just gonna click on them. And so you can kind of dig through and see. Um, the other great thing about this article is it has uh, a great way to see what's on the computer and I've actually copied that here as well but essentially what you do is you just run it and this will give you a list of all the classes that are installed on your system and you can see this is a lot and I think uh, when I did this earlier so I was messing around with it I think it was a little over oops. so let's count right so let's just see how many there are 725 so there are 725 classes available on my computer. Now this is probably on the higher side. I'm still using Windows 10 for this demonstration, but really the way I'm gonna be doing works pretty much from, I think even Windows Vista, but uh, definitely Windows 7 newer. Um, not necessarily all these classes will be available, but searching for these classes and using them. Uh, so one I use semi-regularly is the uh, get WMI class Win32 BIOS, and because we have Dells where I work, and I'm just gonna, oops, dang it, clear. So, so to use this command late, you put, put, of course you use get WMI object, then you have to have the class. If you try to run this without um, anything, it's not gonna return everything. It wants to know what class, so you can see that the class pops up there. So, um, anyways, let's just delete that. So, so if I do that on Adele, for example, this would actually be filled in with the, um, what's it called? The, not the serial number, what are they called? Tag number. So the tag number would be here. So I could actually run it um, and I could just say, I could do something like tag equals and then do, we'll just do serial number here, right? And then if I said tag, it would actually return, and in this case, it just for default string because that's what's set. And this is just kind of a uh, semi-generic motherboard. Um, I believe it's a. I'm just looking. I think it's a gigabyte. Yeah, it's a gigabyte motherboard. And so, uh, you know, it's 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 meant. I built this machine myself, so it's not from any specific manufacturer. So, 
Anyways, this this isn't filled out within this the string, but um, it really does help. And you could also, see if you were looking for a certain version of BIOS, um, you could do the same thing. So it is a handy um, uh, WMI if you're working with a, a lot of hardware. Uh, this one uh, this one works, and this one's always worked across. Uh, it seems like even even I think this worked in 2003 PowerShell, which was 2003 or two, I think it was. Um, so yeah, so that's a good one to know. And this this one um, I did, and again I put all these links out at the bottom, or at least uh, the basics I, I might expand on. But I tried to copy all this in there. So another one. So there's two others uh, that sort of are the same thing. But what I wanted to show was how they work. So we have the w get. Uh, so we have the get wmi object class. So we have win32 volume, and oops. So let's try that again. Right click, copy, paste, yay. And as you can see, I get a lot of stuff. So I have a few different volumes. So there's one of them. This is another. You can see where there's white space, that kind of separates them. I think I have four. So yeah, four of them. So you can see like this one is the C drive. I go down, this one's the E, and this one's the F, and then I think this last one is D. So I don't know why they come in that order, but they do. Um, so as you can see, I can do something like oops, put in, and I'm just going to select drive letter, the label and the free space. And you can see, okay, so the C doesn't have a label, so it's just coming up blank. And then my E is my apps and VMs. Uh, my F is my Steam. So really my video game drive. Um, I have also Overwatch. So I guess it's not just Steam, but originally it kind of started out that way and I just never changed the label. And then I have spinning, which is my um, mechanical hard drive that I hold a lot of, a lot of stuff on. Um, so, I've got a, so I've got a different set of keys. And you could even do, say, something like, say, sort on, let's say, drive letter. Get them in the right order. So now we're going C, D, E, F. So now they're in the right order. But um, but you can see here that I'm going to basically output the same thing, and I'll show you the bigger picture here in a second. Um, but it's interesting because uh, device ID. Well, let's do this. Let's just show you logical disk. And actually, it's a volume name. So I actually want to change that to volume name. So, so I think if I do that, let's put that in here. Right, okay. So if we do that versus this, you can see these are these actually give me the same thing. And this is one thing that does kind of drive me crazy about um, them. So you can see there's in here it's win32 logic disk or logical disk sorry and then this is volume right so if i hit enter it's interesting because you know we've got device id drive letter volume name label and then free space free space so really the only thing that matches is this free space but otherwise i mean these these are the same but I, so i don't know why they call the properties different i wish they would uh, get some consistency across those um so I just wanted to show you that. And then there's other things in here. And I just happened to see this one tonight, which was Win32 Fan. So I thought that was kind of an interesting one. I'm going to clear this for a second. And so you can see, you could at least get a, a status. I could say uh, something. And I could just say select. And I could say, well, all my fans are OK. So you could actually write a PowerShell script that says, um, you know, get this and then run it through a loop and just say, if not equal, okay, then send me an email or whatever you want it to do. Um, in this case, I had it send caption and status, which I can't remember what it did, but, uh, oh, cooling device. So if this had a custom label on it, which, uh, probably most servers and most, um, desktops or laptops may have something little more formal in there but uh, yeah you can see it's you know it's just a cooling device that was an interesting one I've never played with this um, I don't know if you can get fan speed out of it I didn't see that anywhere it doesn't mean it does not there um, you know all these definitely have properties so you know you could always do a get get member and see what's here so 
you can say install date, uh, desired speed. Oh yeah, so there's one. Uh, I don't know if it has it. Let's see. So let's do a. Actually, I'll do it like this. Uh, and dot. Uh, I don't know. No, I didn't return anything. And you know these are these are just basic fans. I don't think they even. I think they're just the three wire, not the four wire. The four wire gives you the speed and feedback and all that. The three wires just really make it spin. Um, so, anyways, uh, there's a lot of different things that that you can do. And again, it's a big list. Uh, let's go back to. There it is. So there's all sorts of stuff in here. Oh, that was a count. I want the count. I want the list. So again, my system is 735 available. So you could have everything from like Windows Share, which I've used for file servers. Um, and this actually works pretty well on Windows 2008 R2 uh, file servers. And, and this will also work on at least 2012 R2 file servers. I haven't tested a good chunk of these on uh, 2016 just because we don't, haven't done a ton of 2016. Not to say we haven't done any. Oh yeah, and there was this Win32 processor. So um, so let's do that and then just delete that. So again, um, if I wanted to say, oh, what's the What's the name of the CPU? I could easily do that. So there's just a lot of good things you can get out of here. And if this had more than one CPU, it would actually bring them up both up. If I had my other system up, I could do that. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to sort of share uh, the the get dash WMI object. I stared away for this from quite a while because I really just wanted the standard uh, PowerShell commandlets. But this has actually been turned out to be uh, a much better... Uh, a much nicer workaround in a lot of ways instead of trying to make something work that really doesn't work. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. I hope this helps and uh, subscribe, like, do all the stuff you every other YouTuber tells you to do. Um, thanks. Bye.